The Multi-Tile UV Bake Tool allows you to bake multi-tile UV texture collections directly inside 3ds Max and output them directly into common multi-tile naming conventions. The Bake Tool was developed in order to process and export multi-tile UV datasets for direct use with Amplify Texture 2 and Unity Pro. As an added bonus, it's a great pipeline addition if you need to take your 3ds Max projects into other multi-tile based tools such as Mari, ZBrush or Mudbox. The Bake Tool opens quite a lot of workflow possibilities, but it shines when it's combined with our texture virtualization technology for Unity. By virtualizing all textures and removing common memory limitations, you'll be able to take your projects to the next level. Bake complex, previous scenes, entire multi-channel collections for your games, take your assets to compatible software such as Mari and push the limits of what is normally possible in real-time applications. In part 1 we will show you how the bake tool works, soon we will release specific videos covering previs and game related bakes. Interchanging data with compatible multi-tile software, processing large scan datasets and direct use with Amplify and Unity. You can install the tool by dragging and dropping the MZP package directly into your viewport. This video provides an in-depth look of what can be achieved with the tool. Don't worry if it looks too complex at a first glance. With most bakes, the options will be left untouched and most of the work involved is fully automated. We will show you a few examples near the end of the video and in future tutorials. By default, baking textures in 3ds Max is limited to the 0 to 1 UV space. Without this tool, manually baking collections is extremely time consuming, especially when dealing with larger collections. This tool allows you to batch bake entire scenes in a simple and automated manner. This video assumes that you have some knowledge of what texture baking and render to texture mean in a 3ds Max context. If you don't know much about the subject, we recommend checking the links provided in the video description before watching this tool overview. The tool is able to batch bake any render to texture element available. It works by accessing your render to texture values directly, be it projection settings, UV channel, padding, texture size and so on. It won't force you to bake any specific elements and it works with any compatible render engines such as Mental Ray or V-Ray. It's totally up to you what to use. Let's take a closer look at the tool. Information about the bake progress will be displayed here, including the number of objects and tiles to bake. The Bake Selected button will initiate the bake process of the selected objects. In the Bake Options box you can define the naming convention used for the bake. The UV channel to bake to. You can choose to disable the Render to Texture Frame Buffer window or if you want to use the standard tile check. The UV channel value is directly pulled from the Render to Texture dialog. Instead of setting it manually on all your models, you can override it here. Beware of third-party frame buffer windows, they probably have to be disabled in their own available options. The Bake tool automatically analyzes your UVs and detects which tiles need to be rendered. You have two options available. The standard mode is much faster, but it assumes that you manually laid out proper UV tiles with organized clusters per UV quadrant. You should uncheck this box if you're using automatic UVs or if you have complex geometry with clusters that occupy more than one UV quadrant, or UV tile as it's also known in other software. In this section you can define the output folder for the bake tiles. The tool provides a couple of useful options. The bake element folder will create a folder per element as the name hints. For example, a folder for the diffuse multi-tile collection or a folder for the normal map collection. Render tiles will be named accordingly to the object's name. The object name folder creates one folder per object. For organization's sake, we recommend leaving both options enabled. The Extras option box is optional, but it's a great way to save time. Instead of defining texture size and padding for all your objects in the Render to Texture dialog, you can override the values directly. Either input the desired value or use the adjustment buttons. The adjustment buttons automatically adjust the value to the nearest power of 2 size. The MISC Batch option box contains specific workflow automation tools. In the post box options, you can enable the automated UV transfer. This is extremely useful if you're baking your models into clean secondary multi-tile UV collections and you would like to automatically transfer those UVs after the bake into the primary channel or any other. The tool also allows you to copy the UVs manually without baking by simply defining your values and clicking on apply. Options to clear the source channel and collapse the modifier stack are also provided. The pre-bake options allow you to quickly unwrap, pack or simply adjust the texel density of your UV collections. By default, the auto-tile options will automatically use the UV flatten option to generate your UVs. 
You can disable this tab by enabling the Pack Only option. You can also use the third-party plugin 3DIO to pack your UVs. In order to use the 3DIO packing option, you must have a valid full license installed in your system. The UV Channel Options is the channel used by the tool to store the unwrapped multi-tile UVs. The Target Pixel Density option will adjust the number of UV tiles and scale of your UV clusters, based on their surface area given any desired pixel density set in this box. Keep in mind that although this works pretty well for most cases, it's only an approximation and it will not account for stretched UVs. We also recommend using meters as your internal max units. These options for cluster rotation, scale, angle, spacing and fill holes are the values used by the 3ds Max Flatten modifier. You can leave them in their default values for most cases. The No Reduction option is used mostly for debug purposes. When enabled, the Bake tool will not reduce your clusters beyond one UV tile. In practice, this means that if your model does not have enough surface area to cover more than one tile in size, it will not be adjusted. Most options can be left in their default values. It's simpler to use than it looks, but it's always good to know what's happening in the background. Let's look at some specific Bake examples and you can see for yourself how easy it is to use our tool. In this example, we will bake a standard projection model, a common technique used to bake normal or displacement maps. In the low poly UV channel 1, we apply the standard planner UVW map inside the 0 to 1 UV quadrant. In the UV channel 2, as an example, we set up 4 tiles, each in their own quadrant. We are now going to bake a 4 tile collection in channel 2, with most bake tool options left in their default state. Open the Render to Texture dialog and set up the projection high poly reference. We need to tell 3ds Max to bake using the UVs in channel 2. You can either set it up per object here or override it for the entire object selection in the Bake Tool dialog. We add the required elements. As an example, we will use a complete map, a diffuse map, a normal map, and a 8 map. We make sure that the output path has been selected. As an example, we will use the tile texture and padding size override. You can also set up these values in the Render to Texture dialog. The MISC batch options are optional, but if you wanted, you could set it up to automatically copy or move the UVs in channel 2 to channel 1 after the bake. With the low poly selected, we are now ready to start baking the collection. As you can see, most options were left untouched. All we have to do now is wait for the bake to finish. Without wanting to make this video too long, we will fast forward. After the bake is complete, your tiles are now ready to be used directly in Unity with Amplify Texture 2 or compatible software. In this case, we use Mari UDIM so you could take them directly to Mari and continue working on your assets. As an example, we decided not to use the automatic UV transfer in the post-bake options. As you can see, after the bake, the second UV channel has the 4 tiles and channel 1 still has a single planar UVW inside the 0 to 1 UV space. We will now show you how to manually copy the UVs. Simply set up the values and click on Apply. The UVs have now been transferred. This example is a glimpse of advanced techniques that will be covered in future videos. In architectural or product previews, given the type of materials recreated, most objects use tile textures either applied with common box or planner mapping UVW. Ideally, when baking multi-tile collections, be it for the actual diffuse channels or simply lighting or occlusion information, it's best to create a separate UV channel, with clear, non-overlapping UVs. In this example, we will use channel 2. Keep in mind that you can use any channel you need, the value is not fixed. As an example, we will bake a complete V-Ray map, to make things more interesting, we will be baking into a high dynamic range format. In this example, we will use a 16-bit EXR. After the bake process, we will take this data set into Unity thanks to Amplify Texture 2 and its high dynamic range support. We select the UV channel, padding and tile texture resolution. For time's sake, we will bake at a lower resolution. We set up the post-bake automatic UV transfer. And, as an example, we will use Mudbox compatible tiles. Since we used an automatic unwrap for our multi-tile UV channel, it's best to turn off the standard tile check and allow the tool to scan the object UVs to determine which tiles to render. This is an example of why you should be aware of frame buffer windows. Although not critical, they might have a considerable processing cost. Let's fast forward the video. 
Since the post-bake UV transfer option was enabled, your model will probably be grey and without textures. It's best to back up your scene or simply save a copy into an isolated layer. The EXR high dynamic range tiles are now ready to be used. We now export the scene model into an FBX file. Create a new Unity project with Amplify Texture 2. Import the model and the baked multi-tile texture collection. Before you can use the EXR tiles with Amplify, you will have to disable the MIP map option and bypass the sRGB conversion. Create the new scene. Add the Amplify Runtime component to the camera and create the Amplify Texture Manager. Create the virtual texture, set the compression to lossless and select the folder that will contain the virtualized materials. We then select our HDR shader. We now add the virtual texture to the Amplify Texture Manager. Add the model to the scene. And with the material applied, we simply have to add the first tile in the collection to the diffuse slot and hit save to build the virtual texture. And just like that you have a scene with virtualized high dynamic range multi-tile collections inside Unity. You can even apply common tone mapping techniques. As an example we will use a linear exposure adjustment. Last but not least we will show you an example of the automatic taxol density option. We will use a 1 square meter plane as an example. The plane has a planar UVW map applied inside the 0 to 1 UV quadrant. With the tile resolution set to 1K and the intended texel density set to 512 pixels, we should end up with a plane occupying a quarter of the tile. Let's choose to pack only, since we already have the UVs we want to use applied. As an example, we turn on the No Reduction option. We click on Simulate and as expected we get a message warning us about reduction. Since the actual UV size would be smaller than the tile and we had the option turned on, no reduction would be applied. If we apply the texel adjustment without the no reduction option, we get the expected result, a quarter of the UV quadrant. If we set the desired density to 2K with a tile resolution of 1K, using our same 1 square meter plane, we should get 4 tiles. As expected, when we click simulate, the UVs have been properly calculated. And if we click apply, we can see that the adjustment has been made. We hope you enjoyed this video. If you have not already, we would like to invite you to try our other Unity Pro products. We offer fully functional trial versions of all our products. Try them today!